Good morning. This is Pastor Kirk Peters from St. Matthew Lutheran Church in Hazen, North Dakota. Uh, God's blessings to you uh, today on his, uh, his day, uh, the day of Sabbath for us. Um, and uh, t today I would like to look at, uh, for our uh, Bible class, Sunday morning Bible class, look at Romans chapter 12. This was not what I had uh, intended uh, to speak about. Uh, however, uh, I think it's uh, very appropriate for us uh, today to do that. Um, so if you would go to Romans chapter 12, please. Romans chapter 12. All right, we begin. Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer yourselves, your bodies, as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. You and I, uh, all people who believe in Jesus is speaking here, or not Jesus, Paul is speaking here, uh, to the church in Rome. And uh, they are believers. So uh, they are made believers uh, by God's mercy. The working of the Holy Spirit uh, through the Word uh, comes to them and uh, um, creates faith in them through the Word and baptism. God doesn't have to do that. In fact, if He gave us what we deserved, we would uh, be destroyed uh, dead in this body and then subject to hell forever and ever. Uh, not a very good uh, thing, but that's what we deserve because of our sin. And yet God in his mercy, in his love for us, and mercy is not getting giving people what they deserve, but rather treating them better than they deserve. This is what God does for us. And so in light of that uh, mercy uh, and Ephesians 2, uh, 8, 9, 10, and 11, uh, that talks about um, that it's not in and of ourselves, but it is God that does that, not by our works that we would boast about, this is why we're saved, but totally by God's mercy. In other words, there's nothing in us that, or nothing we would could do that would warrant for us God's love uh, and salvation uh, that he gives us through faith in Jesus Christ. He doesn't, we don't deserve that. And yet he asks, acts in mercy and treats us better than we deserve. So he calls on them to offer their bodies as living sacrifices. And a living sacrifice, that is strange talk because sacrifices normally die. Uh, but here it's talking about us being living sacrifices. In other words, we give ourselves living in our body to God. And how do we do that? Um, it is uh, by our works, uh, not so that we're saved, but because we are saved. After all, he's, Paul says here that uh, God treat us in mercy, not because of what we have done. But in his mercy, he has saved us, and now we would want to Offer our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Okay? Nor when we think about worship in the church, but here Paul is talking about worship in our daily lives, even outside the, the walls of the church, uh, that uh, this is actually spiritual in nature because we are motivated by the mercy of God for us. And in love for him, we serve our neighbor uh, with our various talents and abilities, even our treasures. We serve our neighbor uh, as we would care for ourselves. We love our neighbor as if he was part of our own body. Okay? And this is a spiritual act of worship. And listen to this. God calls it holy and pleasing to him. So as you do your works, uh, as you befriend others, as you uh, are about your vocation with the gifts and talents and abilities that God has given you, 
you are worshiping him uh, in a holy and pleasing way. Do we always do things correctly? No. But in God's mercy, for the sake of Jesus, they are perfected in God's eyes and our service to others. Though we might make a mistake, uh, though we might uh, do so uh, grudgingly at times, we receive forgiveness for that. Uh, and, our, and God sees our acts of service, our living sacrificial works, as pleasing to him and again holy. It says then in verse 2, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. Okay, uh, Paul uh, kind of in an offhanded way is saying that uh, this isn't the way you were before. Um, you were uh, in the pattern of the world, which is uh, care for myself, care for me, care for my interests, uh, don't treat others uh, as it, I would want to be treated myself, or uh, more so, he's saying, uh, work toward uh, serving God as he has served you, and, it, and serving God is also serving your neighbor. Okay, uh, If you're a father, serving God is caring for your family, and as a mother, uh, serving God is uh, having uh, your children and uh, rearing them, caring for them, and you and your husband together, uh, providing a good and safe home for them. Uh, also for our uh, neighbors outside the home, uh, you may have a particular vocation, say you're a welder. And uh, Susie the welder, she uh, um, uses her talents and abilities for her customers to provide them with good and solid welding, good pieces of material to put to work in their vocations. She does that in faith in Christ and thankful for his mercy, and so she strives to serve the others and not serve herself. And that is a whole, that normal work, uh, I'm not saying that uh, welders are not very talented, but the, uh, that, that is their everyday work, not in the church, not inside the building of the church, but using God's gifts and abilities to serve others, that is a holy work. Unlike the world, the world looks at it, if I weld, uh, and I can, even if I cut corners, I can sell this, and it's good for me. Uh, that is not a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice is... Uh, doing what you do, even though you may receive uh, funds for it and a fair, fair sum for it. Uh, if you use those to benefit others by your talents, that is a holy and pleasing work before God. So he says, do not conform any longer to the old pattern, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When Peter uh, preaches in Acts chapter 2, uh, he talks about uh, uh, baptism and a new life. And when he talks to Nicodemus, Jesus in uh, talks to Nicodemus in John chapter three, he talks about uh, washing with water and renewal by the Holy Spirit. Okay, uh, and so this is the renewing, and it makes your mind right with God. We of course know that we struggle with that. Uh, and we're imperfect in that, but that is because we're still in this uh, human body with a sinful human nature. And that human nature uh, uh, raises his head every day and causes us to think and to do uh, apart from God's word. Uh, praise God that our, uh, um, our forgiveness of sins, the salvation he brings of us, continues... Uh, it's not like if you're baptized, then you can't sin anymore. Uh, you are baptized, and here he talks about a renewal. He's exhorting them uh, to behave according to this renewal of their mind and not according to the world's thinking, which is selfishness uh, and dishonesty. Okay, So, uh, welder or butcher baker or candlestick maker, I always like to say that uh, from our... Uh, uh, nursery rhymes when we were kids. Um, 
and we thank uh, uh, Jack be nimble, Jack be quick. All right. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Hey, okay. uh, he gives us the Ten Commandments. Uh, that is God's will. The first three, uh, we sometimes call them the first table of the law. The first three are uh, about our relationship with God, how we are to receive God and also uh, behave toward him. Uh, so uh, that's the first table. The second table, uh, commandments 4 through 10, are about how we uh, interact with our neighbor. Uh, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not gossip, bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, okay? Um, honor thy father and mother and all, all those in authority, okay? So, uh, Romans uh, chapter 12, uh, verse 2 at the end, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will. All right. And so we do that again in our lives, um, following what is good, uh, searching and uh, performing what is good. And when we do sin, uh, what's our uh, good answer for that? We repent and receive the forgiveness of sins won for us by Jesus Christ. Okay. And then verse 3. For by the grace given me, now here Paul again is talking about uh, he gets uh, by God's grace in calling Paul to be an apostle. Uh, that Paul doesn't deserve that. Uh, he was uh, active in persecuting the church. And uh, even uh, uh, a, uh, um, accessory, if you will, uh, or accessory to murder, that uh, um, he helped people as they were stoning Stephen, holding their clothes uh, so they wouldn't get dirty uh, while they th pummeled uh, uh, Stephen with rocks uh, until he was dead. Do not think of you, or by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought. Okay. We normally have a pretty high opinion of ourselves, don't we? Uh, if we don't, we try to change that, that or change our lives, or we redefine uh, things, the, the things by which we're judged, and we say, well, uh, God is old and he hasn't been around for a while, so the Ten Commandments are outdated. After all, everyone does that. Okay, So we are not to think... Uh, more highly of ourselves, but rather to remember, as he just said, we are saved by God's mercy. Uh, we have the forgiveness of sins by God's mercy, not because we deserve it or because he knows what we will do with it, but because um, of God's grace and mercy, he gives us and treats us better than we deserve. But rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Okay. Um, so when we look at ourselves, we see that we are, again, sinful by nature, that we sin each and every day. Uh, God's word uh, points that out to us, where we have not kept the commandments and not followed his will. But then uh, God's commandment also is to repent and believe in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. So as we go through life and with this sober judgment, uh, we say that we are uh, repentant. Uh, the Christian is repentant all, its, all his or her life. Okay? Uh, not just once, and then you're good to go. But uh, we confess our sins uh, often, and we use the Lord's Prayer, and it says, Forgive us our trespasses. Okay? Forgive us our trespasses. And it's fine to pray that uh, every day, uh, even multiple times of the day, because not only have we done bad things, but we still have this sinful uh, nature uh, attached to us. Okay? Okay? In, in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Okay? 
okay? Um, uh, God gives different gifts, even gifts of discernment. Uh, not everybody sees things quite the way they ought. Uh, some people see some things the way they ought and other things not the way they ought. Um, and that's, um, that's what we are. We're uh, different, and God has apportioned his gifts differently to us. Uh, but we're not supposed to uh, also point fingers at others and say, uh, boy, if they could just be like me. Uh, we had that in our sermon today. Um, but we are the same uh, in that we all do this. We think of ourselves more highly than we ought to. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each body or each member belongs to all the others. Okay, um, he's speaking about um, our life in the church uh, as um, that we're a member, just as we uh, understand that my let's say my right index finger uh, is uh, uh, part of the body. It can't do everything, and yet it has a part to play, okay? And my eye should not say, oh, you can't see anything, finger. Because the finger could say, well, uh, you can't grab the coffee cup uh, and lift it to uh, pastor's lips so that he can have another sip of coffee. And, of course, then the mouth is also involved, the arm to raise the finger uh, with the cup, uh, our facial muscles and our mouth muscles to swallow uh, and our body to process the coffee. Okay, so uh, we should not be uh, like uh, an eye and say we can do, or the brain, we can do everything. We're responsible for everything. Okay, everyone ought to like us and believe uh, or and uh, honor us. Okay. Just as each body, each one of us has a body with many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So um, I should uh, not uh, look down at people because uh, they, they do not preach. Okay. Uh, others may be particularly gifted in uh, caring for uh, older people, uh, welcoming them to church, assisting them, uh, to get to their uh, spot to sit, um, helping them come up to communion. Uh, and also out in the world we do these things. Uh, we again use our talents and abilities uh, for the benefit of others who can't do what we do. But we have to remember we also trust in others in the church uh, and outside the church uh, to do things that we are not gifted to do. So the finger should then not be, uh, should not be uh, boastful about getting the coffee because the eye uh, sees where the coffee cup is, uh, and that impulse is uh, radio or sent to the brain. The brain processes it, uh, and it, even without our thinking, sends our hand down uh, with our uh, trigger finger, if you will. Uh, and uh, um, picks up the coffee uh, and brings it to our mouth. And, uh, so all things are involved with that. So in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. So it's not that uh, um, we are free uh, to do for ourselves what we want, but uh, we owe, actually, others our service because they are gifts from God uh, to help ourselves and to help others. We have many gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, that is speaking the wonders of God, as we talked about in our uh, sermon today, if his gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. Okay? Maybe not all people who prophesy uh, do it uh, at the same level uh, or as often, but that's because God is giving uh, this gift of grace to them and apportions it as he, he sees fit. 
If in serving, let him serve. If, if it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. So in, as he names all these things, Paul says, excel in them. If this is your gift, excel in them to the best of your ability, uh, and thereby you serve the body of Christ and even those outside the body of Christ. Okay. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do so cheerfully. Again, as uh, uh, God has gifted us with mercy, we in love and mercy ought to serve others and, and be cheerful about it. Um, uh, God loves uh, to have someone do something for the joy uh, of serving God and serving neighbor. All right. Then uh, nine is love must be sincere, hate what is evil, cling to what is good. We're gonna uh, modify, or we're gonna talk about that hating what is evil uh, very soon. Uh, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal. That is, uh, always try to do things uh, in the best possible way. Um, and thereby uh, you serve God. Uh, again, uh, if you are imperfect, uh, God perfects you in Jesus Christ uh, that your works might bring about a great, great blessing to others. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer, Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Um, uh, their sense of hospitality was much uh, greater than ours. Uh, we remember our, our, Bi our Bible stories, our Sunday school stories, uh, like when the three men visit uh, Abraham, he kills the fatted calf for them. He doesn't save it back and bring them something that is inferior, but rather gives the very best and is pleased that they uh, stop uh, and eat their fill. Okay? Pros uh, hospitality. They literally took people into their own homes. They didn't want anyone to be out on the street uh, and not have uh, protection, uh, shelter, uh, and food and drink uh, in the evening. Bless those who persecute you. That doesn't mean we're happy about it, but we, uh, um, we want to bless them, ask for God's blessings upon them, even though those uh, who seek to harm us, okay? Uh, those who are unfriendly to us, those who work against us, we are to bless them. Uh, that, not that they would, not only that they would turn from their animosity toward us, but that they would have a good life and receive the gifts of God uh, and uh, live in his grace and mercy. And above all with that is uh, um, praying to God that he would uh, uh, bring them to baptism and renewal by the Holy Spirit, uh, that in baptism they might be made new. Okay. Verse 14. Bless those who persecute you and do not curse. Okay? Don't return uh, the curse they uh, uh, visit upon you or the harm that they visit upon you with a curse where you want God to harm them. Uh, that would not be good. Again, he prefaces this that you, are get, you and I are getting what we do not deserve love and and good things from God. We don't deserve it. So too, uh, someone who may persecute us uh, in the world scheme, they don't deserve our blessing and our care. And yet, uh, God tells us, uh, do not curse them, but bless them. Okay. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Okay. Uh, um, 
enter into people's lives with them, interact with them. When they are joyful, uh, appreciate that and encourage them in that joy. Uh, if they are mourning, uh, we in compassion for them uh, and love for them uh, are with them as they mourn uh, and uh, we pray for them, uh, we encourage them and lift them up so that their mourning might be changed to joy at its appropriate time. Okay. 16. Live in harmony with one another. Okay. Um, if we are not uh, living in love and mercy, um, here it indicates that we're not in harmony. Think about that uh, when you are, uh, or if you hear someone singing and someone is off, uh, kind of like your pastor, uh, Pastor Peters uh, uh, in the service is not always on key, and it makes uh, things sound bad. It affects the whole singing, the singing of everyone when someone is not in harmony. Okay, as we live this life, uh, live in harmony, be on the same page, uh, uh, be with others, not against them. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Okay. We uh, struggle with that, don't we? That uh, we think uh, we judge others first of all as being in a lower position than us. And what did he say? What did Paul say to begin this chapter? Um, in view of God's mercy for you, we ought to also have mercy on others. We talked about the Lord's prayer before. Um, Forgive us our trespasses as we are forgiving those who trespass against us. So we don't see them as less because they don't do what we want. But we see them uh, as those needing God's mercy and we are there to deliver it. Uh, to also be merciful in what we, act, or what we do and say for them. Uh, how we care for them. Um, that's, that's why those th two things are linked together. We ask for God's forgiveness in the Lord's Prayer and at other times uh, in our rite of confession and absolution. But if we then withhold forgiveness uh, and the, the forgiveness of sins from others who have sinned against us, uh, we are not uh, honoring God's uh, love and mercy for us. And he also says at the uh, end of Matthew uh, chapter 18, he tells the parable about the unmerciful servant who is forgiven a great debt, and yet for a much smaller debt, he wants to choke the life out of his fellow servant. And so we pray in the Lord's Prayer that as we receive God's forgiveness, we also would forgive. Okay. Okay, now, 17, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Uh, the reason I uh, switched to this uh, study this morning is because of uh, all the evil that is going on in our nation today. Uh, it is heartbreaking that... Uh, uh, our civilization is uh, being torn apart by evil because someone else did evil. Um, I, it, it seems apparent that uh, uh, someone was, was killed uh, at the hands of the police in an inappropriate way, uh, not for uh, sins... Uh, that caused danger uh, to the officers or to others. Um, and the evidence uh, appears uh, sound to us, and yet um, we, we are not uh, to um, 
anxiously uh, condemn that person. Uh, we are to allow the order that God has place, put in place through our government uh, to work uh, justice out uh, for these uh, police officers who apparently uh, did something evil. But now uh, to repay and to cause people to suffer through violent demonstrations, through the uh, um, destruction of property not our own, uh, and for endangering the lives of uh, police officers and others by throwing things, uh, by starting fires, uh, by disrupting society. Um, it says here, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right as far as it depends on you. Live at peace with everyone. Uh, not my words. Um, Paul uh, writes it here, but we believe that these are the very word of God, uh, which the Holy Spirit, uh, just like he inspires us uh, to uh, and moves us to accept Christ as our Savior, he also caused uh, St. Paul to write these words. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Uh, we often think we're, think we're justified in our anger. Um, we need to be very careful about that. Uh, our anger is often, it's an emotional thing, and the Proverbs tell us uh, that anger uh, takes away wisdom. Anger uh, takes away uh, right procedures and right actions toward other. So uh, it uh, uh, clouds our mind and we don't think clearly, which is to remember that what we deserve, we ourselves, what I deserve from God is uh, condemnation and destruction in hell. And yet he has forgiven me. And in light of that, Paul writes, do not repay uh, anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right. We are allowed uh, peaceful protest in our country. Uh, the First Amendment uh, gives us that right to do so. Uh, but these uh, um, protests are not, uh, are not good. They are not doing what is right. They are disrupting. Uh, they are endangering. Uh, they are destroying uh, things, uh, and uh, when anger uh, becomes rage, um, all all uh, all wisdom and clear thinking goes right out of your head. Um, so, but we always think we're we deserve uh, rage and anger. We think that that's uh, our right. Well, not according to God. He says you don't have the right to be that way toward other people. You shouldn't be that way toward other people. After all, remember that the only reason that you are not dead uh, to this life and uh, suffering in hell is because of God's grace and mercy. Because God has treated you like this and renewed your mind in the Holy Spirit or with the Holy Spirit uh, that you might think not according to the world, eye for eye. Um, uh, that's often misunderstood. They were not saying you must take an eye for an eye. They were saying don't uh, lop off their head if he caused danger or injury to someone's eye. Let the uh, punishment be appropriate. And uh, unfortunately, uh, this is all uh, started uh, by... Uh, possibly police officers who uh, did not do what they were supposed to do, um, that even though this man uh, committed a crime, they are not to be uh, the judge and jury uh, and not the executioner. Uh, but then in return, we do not repay that evil with evil. Um, we have no right. Uh, we should be thankful to God that he has saved us that he has rescued us from what we deserve. 
uh, and we wait patiently. Uh, laws are in place, um, uh, but we have to let those laws play out in their proper procedure, or it's not orderly. It's not orderly. Uh, we have found later on sometimes that uh, what happened was not the whole story, uh, but immediately uh, we are... Uh, some of us anyway, are rioting, uh, demanding justice. Well, uh, the time for justice has not uh, expended itself. Uh, there needs to be a plea. There needs to be uh, charges organized uh, so that the person can plead guilty or not guilty. And if he pleads not guilty, uh, then we have to investigate uh, properly. You wouldn't want to be condemned uh, immediately. Uh, and uh, uh, for us to say that these men uh, who uh, it appears have uh, overstepped their bounds as police officers, uh, that they should not have due process of law, uh, that's incorrect. Uh, we depend on that for ourselves and we should extend it to others. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. As far as it depends on you, this means you are not justified uh, in, in living in animosity toward others, toward uh, rioting in, a, uh, uh, in an evil sense. If you want to protest peacefully, uh, that is allowed in our country. But uh, protests which destroy things and cause harm or potential harm to others, um, uh, the, that is against God's word and against uh, our Constitution. It's not, it is not a right. Okay. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, It is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. It's the end of the chapter. Um, heaping burning coals on someone's head, uh, that's uh, figurative. Don't uh, start the Kingsford's. Uh, and prepare to dump them on your neighbor's head. But using kindness, and if someone drops coals on your head, you've got to do something about it. You've got to remedy the situation. And so uh, by uh, befriending uh, someone who harms you, your enemy, by befriending them, uh, you put them in a situation where they've got to do something. Uh, and in that uh, they may ask, why would you do this for me? And you can say, as Paul does, the Lord has been merciful to me. Uh, in view of God's mercy for me, I do this kindness for you. Uh, it's not my doing, it's God uh, moving me to do this through the Holy Spirit uh, and to do, uh, again, uh, unwise things as far as the world is concerned, okay? Conform to the pattern of the world, which is uh, to starve your enemy, uh, to cause him to thirst to death. Don't give him the comfort of uh, your service or your resources. In doing this, okay, um, so However, if we do that, if we proceed as God has in mercy toward us, God gives us food and drink and cares for us. Even the ungodly, he does this for. Even those who hate God, God does this for them. Okay? And we are called to do the same. And then, uh, in doing so, uh, they will be forced uh, to do something about it, uh, which we pray uh, God would send them the Holy Spirit through a uh, word, possibly our words, and our actions uh, of love according to God's will 
and that they might turn from their sin and their hatred of us and be saved. We pray, good and gracious Heavenly Father, uh, you know all things and you have all things in your hands. We ask that you would uh, calm the anger and the fury in our nation over the uh, death of someone uh, in an illegal, uh, apparently illegal manner, but that we would rejoice that you are merciful uh, and that we also would uh, respond in mercy and love uh, rather than hate and anger and violence. Protect our law enforcement officers as they do good uh, in keeping us safe, uh, in establishing and upholding our laws uh, that we might live in peace uh, and security uh, with you. We ask that all who are injured, uh, that you would send them uh, the blessing of recovery. Uh, all those who are incarcerated, that you might give them hope in the forgiveness that is yours in Jesus Christ. And also that our magistrates and uh, judges uh, would, perform, would bring uh, justice to bear on all in e an equal manner and appropriate uh, to the situation. We trust in you and ask again that we, you would guide us to live in peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. The Lord's blessings and peace to you uh, today and every day.